Hello. We'll say something. Hey, ma'am. Hey, man. I guess there's not too many men watching this. Just you. Do you want to put your stampin' lips on? <laughs> no? Weird. What you eating there? Some yogurt and... Blackberries and blueberries. I had a really good workout today. Awesome. What did you do? Three by K, and they're at 440 per mile pace. And then five by 300 at 415 pace. And then two 200s at and re made a Reese pace, and those were 27 and 28. 27 and 28? Yep. What does that mean? Per 200. Oh. Seconds. Nice. And then that was good. That was a good workout. Good. good. And then... Belby confirmed that I'm running Iowa State 3200. Nice. That's a lot of laps. How many laps is that? It's, well, it's a 300 meter track, so it's 10 and 2 thirds. 10 and 2 thirds laps. Not as bad. As, I will never run 16 laps for a 32. Hi, guys. Well, that's exciting. Is the schedule up? Probably not. <laughs> We should look because some people want to plan. P -B -T -F. I do know that you're running on my birthday. Well, you should be running on my birthday. Do you know how old I'm going to be this year? Yes. How old? 50. That's pretty old. You're not old till 20 years after you're dead. That's true. Grandma still has 19 more years to go. I know. Oh. Um. Oh yes, they, it is up. Oh good, you should print it off for me. Go on the computer and print it off. Yay! I need to. I don't want to show the ladies my half tights. Oh. All right. Oh, well, hello them, everybody. You should show them that picture of me from Misfits. I posted that already. They are, They've already seen you. The one. The one of me going. Oh, no, not that one. I just, you just, you never sent that to me. Oops. Okay, so hi. <laughs> Did you enjoy our quick little interview with Carl? He just got home from school slash workout, so this is my first time saying hi to him, and I'm like, I'm going live. <laughs> um, well, hello, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. <gasps> Pamela, it's your first time here. Yay! Well, welcome. That was my son, Carl. He is a senior in high school and an avid runner. Um, we are about to embark on our final track season. So that's exciting. And um, let's see. <laughs> uh, I have, so Pamela, I have two kids, a senior in high school and a senior in college. And actually, I talked to the senior in college earlier today. She is um, looking for jobs. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, Kay Kayla, who's from Tasmania, said, wow, that was a lot of talking for a teenage boy. <laughs> I know, right? Sometimes he really can um, be a chatterbox. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I think, did I, the comments are going a little fast. I think Anne said, do I normally post a, a link? Yes. I do normally post a link on Facebook and there should be one there. So, yeah. Um, has he determined where he's going to college? He has not, Jean. No. <laughs> um, he has not. Explain still, why. Still working on that. Um, he is hoping to run in... Um, college and so he's looking for the right place <laughs> and he is um he is still in the process he's narrowed it down to four schools really and uh we'll see what happens 
Athletic scholarships. Well, Jean, you know, if you don't play football or basketball, um, athletic scholarships are pretty hard hard to come by. Um, and if you do get one, it's usually for not a lot. So like they'll divide it. So men's track and field teams, you have to split it between you have 12 and a half scholarships to split between all of cross country and both indoor and outdoor track. And you have 12 and a half women have 18. So like you can get like a quarter of a scholarship. So it would be like 12 and a half minus a quarter, but usually people like, I don't think anyone's ever gotten a full. So no, <laughs> they don't, you don't get much. <laughs> um, yes, it is too bad. He is quite actually good in academics so he will get money for academic merit versus athletic prowess so um but I always like to remind him that running won't probably pay his bills ever so Any anyway of the schools I chose. oh did you even highlight the ones you're going to yes yay thank you all right Girls. we'll see you after my live my dear Okay, so yeah, he's he's narrowed it down to I think four schools, and we're still trying to figure out what's going to happen. Um, and he uh, he would like to major in probably biochemistry, pre med, or something along those lines because he'd like to be a doctor. My daughter is graduating with a degree in um, software engineering, right? Yeah. So she is, um, she's looking for jobs and uh, has had a lot of really good experiences so far. So I think she won't have too much trouble finding a job. Um, and uh, she... I think once she graduates, we'll probably get engaged. We'll see. I, well, I shouldn't say that. I know they'll get engaged. It's just as a matter of when. So it's going to be a really, really busy spring here at the Creativity Cave. Two graduations, track, the final season of track, all of that stuff. I'm turning 50. Um, so all kinds of stuff going on. It's it's going to be crazy. Oh, and there's an incentive trip to Mexico at the very end of April, which I guess I, I <laughs> Friday was the last day we could register for it or, or cash out of it, and I decided to register. So I wasn't sure if we could squeeze it all in, but Judy said I look 30. Oh, Judy, you're so sweet. Do you see all the gray hair? Do you want to know why I go blonde? It hides the gray really well. <laughs> it's all, it's really gray right here and right here. And then my natural hair color is something more along these lines. But when you use blonde highlights, that hides gray hair pretty well. That's why. Um, when my mom was my age, actually, I don't really remember my mom ever not being almost completely gray. So... Uh, I would definitely have a lot of gray hair. And I know some people do grayish hair on purpose. And I think that's just a little crazy. I would never do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's that's not, I just, I'm not a gray person. But I do enjoy being blonde because it does hide the gray. <laughs> so anyway, um, and I like to think it highlights my delightful personality. <laughs> Um, what did I do to my mom, Rosie? Girl, I did nothing to my mom. It's more what did my mom do to me? Hmm. There's quite a backstory on my parents if you've ever if you've ever read it. It's on my blog about 13 years ago. It's a crazy story. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's see what if, what what do I have to share with you today? Well, I hope you had a great weekend. Um, I did a little bit of cleaning out. Um, I got rid of an entire car load of stuff to Goodwill, so that was really nice. 
Um, I also had some time to just relax with my family. We did not watch the Super Bowl. I know, like kind of, kind of, um, an anomaly, I guess. Well, you know, I really used to, I really used to love football and, um, I really kind of got out of it, uh, enjoying it a few years ago when there was a lot of like bad football player behavior happening. And I mean, like, like at all levels, like from, from like high school level on up. And I just was like, you know, I'm not here for it. And, um, so <coughs> we didn't watch, I kept tabs a little bit on the game only because if, if I was going to root for anybody, it would be for San Francisco. And the only reason that would be is because Ella's boyfriend, and when I say boyfriend, I mean boyfriend, um, was playing. The quarterback of her, the college she went to is the quarterback for San Francisco, Mr. They call him Mr. Irrelevant because he was drafted last in the draft and he has been on in the Super Bowl once he's been in foot in the NFL for two years. So yeah, it's just, it's just not my thing. Um, and you know, the other thing that just makes me kind of a little, and I don't mean to be like all serious and weird, but I just don't like all of the bad things that happen to people around professional sporting. And what I mean by that is it was in Vegas, which just makes me cringe. Um, at the thought of what bad things took place in in Vegas around the football game and I guess I would say mainly in towards women so um that's all I'll say about that I just think some of the things that happen with professional sports are icky so there you go on a very sad note though who did you see that <laughs> I think I had like a little fuzz in the air that was lit up by my light. I don't have my lights on back there, so it's really bright in the front of me. Anyway, um, the, the one thing that is really, really sad that happened this weekend is, and I can't think of his name, um, the guy who broke the marathon world record. See, we are really into running in this house. <laughs> it started with my daughter and it has continued with my son. Um, and so we are so sad, um, that, uh, the guy who broke the world record in the marathon died in a car crash. He was only 24. So that was really sad. That happened this weekend. Um, no, my daughter's boyfriend is not Brock Purdy. <laughs> I joke because she always calls him her boyfriend. Her boyfriend is, um, same age as Brock Purdy, but, um, he is an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I do think Brock Purdy's a nice kid, but that's all I'll say. Okay. Um, Kayla doesn't know anything about the Super Bowl because it's not a thing in Australia. Yeah. Um, but I know. And then this whole Taylor Swift thing just makes me, <sighs> don't hate on me. I'm not a Swifty. <laughs> um, I am a little disturbed by the influence that she has like, I think it's probably for the most part good, um, you know, because she's not like gyrating on screen. Um, she's doesn't swear. She's not icky, you know, morally, I guess, for the most part. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not a thing or I, I'm just I don't know. I, but I think I feel like people are influenced by her a little too much. Yes, it's become a religion and that is scary. That's wrong. It's just weird. I again, I'm I don't really have anything against him per se. I just don't I, I just don't like her that much. I don't know. I know. I well, I could blame a lot of things on the media. Uh I I I feel I don't know. I will say, though, there was some woman, well, you know, she has her little entourage that she went to the Super Bowl with, and there was a lady in there that looked so out of place, and I don't know, just weird. 
Okay, that's all. We don't have to talk about the Super Bowl anymore. <laughs> I just had to share, I guess. I mean, football's fun, but it just, uh, I just don't like the icky parts about it. So, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't understand why people are so psychotically into Taylor Swift. Like I get that she's kind of fun and I don't know, whatever, but I don't get it, I guess. So, <laughs> but I will admit to singing along to some of her songs. Some to, actually, there's a couple songs that I just realized were actually by her that I didn't realize they were um, her songs. And I was like, oh, huh. I do, I do um, feel bad because it sounds like I don't, I haven't followed this whole thing, but it sounds like she's re-recording all of her music so that it's hers. And I, that's another thing I just don't understand. This is something I don't understand about like, um, musicians, like they don't own their music or they cut deals with pe someone else who owns their music. Like, I don't get that. Like, I think that's weird. Like if it's your music, it should be your music. Um, I read that, Today I read that Michael Jackson's music catalog is worth like 1.2 billion and I, like that's insane. And then I also read I didn't really read an article just a like a little snippet or something um that said that he bought the Beatles um he bought the Beatles whatever you call it uh catalog and outbid John Paul McCartney, not John Paul McCartney. And I guess that was bad. I don't know, whatever. But then I also, okay, so one more thing about Taylor Swift. Uh, now, I don't know if any of this is true because you know, she's just flipping everywhere, which is kind of like, bleh. but um, I guess she she just has an, an obscene amount of money, which, you know, I, she works hard. I That's fine. Um, but they were like listing all of the like excessive things she has, like homes and um, cars and uh, a private airplane and whatever. It's just like, huh, huh, interesting. That's a lot. I don't know. Interesting. But anyway. So I thought it would be fun to do some stamping today. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. I guess, I don't know. I just, I don't know. And I hope she's a lovely person. I She could be, I don't know. But I think it's interesting, just all of the hoopla around her and this football season and... um. And everybody's got opinions about her in the football season. So anyway, um, she gives away a lot of money at every venue show. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I heard she like gave all the people who drive all the crap for her um, <laughs> her stage shows. Like, I guess it takes like... 43 semis or something to put on her show and she gave them all like a big huge um a big huge bonus for schlepping her stuff around I guess you know that's nice <laughs> good for her <laughs> she should <laughs> anyway um I also think I heard she makes like an obscene amount of millions per show but that's another story Oh, so fascinating. I know. You know, I will say, I hope she's, um, I hope that she's happy with her football player boyfriend. I did see the meme of him. I mean, I don't, you actually, I asked my husband at lunch if he'd seen it and he said he hadn't. And I'm like, are you like just not looking anywhere? Cause I've seen it a bazillion times already of him like screaming at the coach and you know, people are all up in arms about that. And I'm like, whatever. I mean, does it look horrible in the picture? Of course it does. But what's the context? Like, whatever. I don't know. It's it's all very interesting, isn't it? I guess, what would I do if I had these problems? Hmm. I think I'd still make cards. 
<laughs> oh, goodness. I have to laugh. Um, oh, that's funny. Deb said her pastor asked a show of hands of who was rooting for the 49ers and who is for Taylor's team. <laughs> I know I saw somebody wearing a t-shirt that says it like looked like the Kansas City Chiefs, but it didn't say that on it. It said Taylor's boyfriend's team or something like that. It was pretty funny. Okay. So I've got just a couple things to share with you. Uh, we've got a busy week here at the Creativity Cave. We have our, um, we're working on getting our boxes for the Lavender Dreams Stamping Escape out this week. And um, so that's going to be super fun. I'm really excited about that. It is a... Uh, an online retreat that I'm doing with my besties, Barb and Kelly, coming up um, on the February 23rd through the 25th. And we are, um, we are getting ready to ship those boxes out. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And if you haven't registered, I think I put a link in the description of this um, video so you can get registered for it. And then, um, let's see, let me get, I got to get my papers in order. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip my camera. Oh, I've got fun cards to show, share with you. Okay, so, woo, here we go. Flipping my camera around. Oops. Oh dear, what did I do? Okay, kidding, 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 cancel, okay. Don't you? Sorry. Ooh, that's right up my nose. You, sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> you didn't need to see that. Right up my nose. Gosh. Okay. So, you guys are gonna laugh at this. Um, I uh, I just got a new trimmer because I gave my trimmer for my desk um, for my husband, and so um, we've got my other trimmer is in the shipping department for the girls to use, uh, you know, cause they use it on stuff. And then now I just got my own, my own back in my office. I'm so happy. So that came. Phew. All right. So uh, lavender dream stamping escape. Oh my gosh, you guys, I was just working on my final touches of my projects cause we're cutting paper this week. And I have to say the cards are so pretty. I'm really excited about this. I'm even doing a fun fold, which, you know, I'm not really into the fun folds, but I've got a really cute one for one of my projects. And then um, actually, well, sort of two. One, I don't know if a fun fold is appropriate, but whatever. Um, and then, um, so we have 12 pre-recorded project videos, all for cards. And then we're doing three lives. And then like one of the lives is for a, um, frame for a sampler. One of the lives is for a boxed set of cards. And then one of the lives is for a notepad and then some more cards. It is going to be so much fun. Now the lives of course will be recorded, but they're happening throughout the weekend. And then we're also playing and I'm, I can't even tell you guys how excited I am about this. We're going to be playing the stamping games, which are kind of like the Olympic games, but for stamping. And so that is going to be so much fun. I can't wait for you guys to participate in that. It's, it's different than anything we've ever done before. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, so that's coming up. So get registered. We're featuring, of course, the the lavender um, or perennial lavender suite of products will also be using um, some celebration items and a couple extra items in our projects. So it's going to be just wonderful. I can't wait for you guys to enjoy it. So get registered if you haven't already. Um, I'm going to be making three cards today featuring um, the watercolor melon stamp set, which is one of our celebration choices at the $50 level. And my projects, by the way, are so cute. You can get a card kit for those projects for free if you spend $35 in my online store from today until um, the 18th, Sunday the 18th. And you, if you spend $50, of course, you'll get a celebration choice from Stampin' Up! Plus, 
my um, Perennial Lavender All-Star Video Class Bundle, which are even more projects with the Perennial Lavender Suite, which is very fun. Um, and if you spend $75, you're also going to get an embellishment, which you'll see here in just a little bit. So lots of really fun things here. Now, um, well, along with that card kit, you'll get a PDF for my projects for today, which is really fun as well. So awesome stuff. Um, I have my sun, sending sunshine or sunshine and creativity delivered box. You get registered during April, February for the March box, which is going to be sympathy and thinking of you cards. And oh my gosh, you guys, they're so pretty. Oh, I'm very excited about this one. So if you're not, uh, a subscriber you can get subscribed I also have on my blog um, a box a single box right now and I actually will probably be adding a couple more but I did a, a video on this card which was one of the cards from my box about all about the brayer and you can still get that single box I have some extras um, and that's all on my blog so check it out all right, it's of course celebration time right now, which means that you can earn a free celebration item for every fifty or hundred dollars that you spend. You can also, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna look at the watercolor melon set tonight. And oh my gosh, I'm making a not watermelon card with it. That's so cute. Um, but there's all kinds of fun goodies in here that you can choose from. You can also earn extra celebration items if you host a party or place a large order of $300 or more. You'll get an extra $30. That's on top of what you already get um, in Stampin' Rewards for an order of that size. So that's a really great deal. And then, of course, if you join Stampin' Up!, you can choose with your starter kit a celebration bonus, which is either the glass mat studio, which I have here on my desk, which comes with this glass mat plus two other items, uh, like a chamois and a little silicone thingy. I, I use this. I have it off um, right now, but you can see right here. I've got some ink on it. I like it because I put my little... Um, my little stick pins. This is what I hold my ribbon with. So like if I've got a roll of ribbon in my drawer, I hold the end on with the stick pin so it doesn't unravel. So yeah, kind of cool. But anyway, you can choose this um, or you can get an extra $30 in your starter kit. Um, all of the items that you choose. So it's really a great time to participate with Stampin' Up! So don't forget about that. And um, on Stamp Happy Academy this month, we have an online class called Trusty Tools, which you can order or you can get it on the Stamp Happy Academy website, which is our subscription website, which is full of awesome inspiration each month and is really quite fun. So there you have it. Okay, now I've got some cards to share with you that came in the mail. I got a bunch today, too. It's been a great mail week this past week. So look at this stack of goodies I have. Okay, so this first one, isn't this pretty with the wreath? This is from Karen and it says, wishing you a day of love and friendship, which is just so sweet. Thank you so much, Karen. I love it. And look at this cutie patootie. This is that um, Be Mine stamp set from Sandy. Thank you so much. So I, by, by the way, I love this. She said, thanks for doing this. Um, we had a Valentine card exchange in my um, Sunshine and Rainbows Facebook group, which is a place where you can nominate people to receive cards and then we send cards out. But then we also do card exchanges from time to time. And we had 100 people join in on this um, where you sign up and you just send one card. And if you want to send more, you can. So uh, that was really fun. And it seems like some people were sending extra cards to me. So that was really nice. So this one is from Laura, who's so sweet. Um, again, saying thanks for arranging such a car nice card exchange. So thank you so much for joining us, Laura. And I love your card with the um, Adoring Hearts bundle. So that's really fun. Then this cutie patootie, look at this. This is a thank you card I received. And when you pull it up, it reveals a sentiment. So how cute is that? This is with the ice cream set that's on the cover of our catalog. 
And this card was from Kathy, who's just the best. Actually, I, can I just read this for a second? She said, Dina, thank you for the team prize drawing. I just love the paper butterfly accents. I'm so proud to be a part of your team. That just makes my heart happy. You are so very talented and such an inspiration. Thanks again. So thank you, Kathy. And this card was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I just love it. So, and look at this. She did, this is from the Border Basics dies. She did this on the flop, the flop, the flop of the envelope, the flap of the envelope. So I thought that was really cool, clever as well. Here's another super cute card. Oh, I loved that folder that we had that a few years ago. This was from Jolene. Thank you so much, Jolene. Another super cute card. This one, you make my heart buzz, which is so sweet, from Adrian. She is on uh, my team as well. She's such a sweetheart. So thank you so much for thinking of me, Adrian. This cute card, oh, I love it, is from Suzanne. We did this fold, oh gosh, probably a year ago. Um, so thank you, Suzanne, for sending me this sweet card. I love it. Another pretty Valentine here from Joyce, and she's just the best. I have to read this to you because I know you guys are going to love it. I'll type it out for you as well um, later this week. It says, I'm sending you a hug. Sometimes it's nice to get an unexpected hug for no other reason than just because you're loved. So while you're reading these words, don't think of them as just words. Think of each one as a hug from for your heart from mine. And isn't that just the sweetest saying? I just love that. So thank you so much, Joyce. This is really sweet. So I will, I will put, cause I know y'all are going to ask me for this. So I will post this, um, on my Facebook page for you or on my blog too, probably. And look at this coordinating envelope. Um, this is from Amy. So thank you so much, Amy. I love this card. It's so simple, but it's so pretty. And she embossed designer series paper, which I think is just so fun. All right. Here is another beautiful thank you card I received. This is from Debbie, um, that she sent this with her card swap from, um, we're, we're doing a card swap for our kickoff. So that's fun. Here is another beautiful card. It says, I really appreciate you from Cynthia. I believe I saw you flash your name flash on here. She won the Be My Valentine um, from, I think that must have been the kickoff, maybe, Cynthia, I think. So that's fun. Look at this. This is so cute. Are you ready for it? Because it's, oh my gosh, it's so adorable. What? So Becky sent me this, which just cracks me up because it's just so cute. Um, I was kind of hoping she would, to be honest. <laughs> she sent me this. She said, you should make this card. So I'll have to do something um, like this soon. But this is from Becky, who's my one of my assistants. So thank you for that, Becky. Here is another beautiful card. This one is from Sue Reed. So thank you so much for this, Sue. I love it. Fun colors. I love, like, who would have thought putting the stacked stone background with these pretty hearts so I loved that one then this card just made my heart happy look at all those beautiful hearts isn't that just so cute and and every other one is embossed which is really fun so this one came from Tara so so sweet thank you so much she said she didn't sign this card so that I could use it again but I think it will probably not get used I'm going to put it on my shelf because it makes me happy um, so thank you so much, Tara. Look at this beautiful card. This one came from Nancy and um, she won a, burn, a fern bundle. So thank you very much for that beautiful card, Nancy. I hope you enjoy your ferns. Here's another super cute card. This one is from Brenda, who's on my team. She's just the best. And I love this bee stuff. It's all so stinking cute. Here is a really pretty card from Anne, and it pops up, so it's like a diorama type card, which is super cool. So it says, thanks for all the creative inspiration and sharing your life with us. Well, I'm sorry, I don't need to read all these cards, but thank you so much, Anne. I love this, and I appreciate the card. And then another sweet Valentine card. This one is from Becky, who's also on my team. So thank you all so much for these adorable cards. I really appreciate them. 
and I hope um, that you are going to get a Valentine from somebody who who made you one, whether it's a kid or a grandkid or a funny um, or a fun friend. Sorry, I didn't mean to say funny or a friend. Um, I hope you have a Valentine that comes your way. All right. So our first card, like I said, we're using the watercolor melon stamp set, which is just a really fun set. Very easy to work with. Um, and our first card is one that I got. This one I got from one of my team members. So it's a really cute card featuring um, a stamp. So I'm going to show you a couple stamp sets that pair nicely with the watermelon set because there's no sentiments in here. So we had to add sentiments. All right. So I'm going to start by folding my card base in half. And um, so I've got a sweet sorbet card base, and I'm just going to move this off to the side so it's a little bit out of my way. Okay, so sweet sorbet card base, and then I have die cut. Um, this is our in color, sh what is this stuff called? textured specialty paper it has it has a shimmer to it as you can probably see it's a really pretty stuff and this is um with the perennial postage dies which are one of my that absolute faves really like these so i'm just going to go ahead and adhere this to my card base and then um we're going to do a little stamping so i've got um, a four by five and a quarter on the inside that I'm going to stamp on. And then I've got this, um, it's the second largest die cut in the dies that we're going to stamp on. And then I also am going to need um, some scraps for my different pieces. And you're going to laugh. I just have like these random scraps sitting right here that I'm trying to use up. So that's what we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to start with my watermelon. And I'm going to stamp this in garden green, but you could really choose a lot of different colors for your watermelons, shaded spruce, granny apple green. I probably wouldn't go with old olive, but you could. Um, and even parakeet party, it would be kind of like a, let's just say not super ripe watermelon, but I'm just saying it could work. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this um, on my scrap not on my not on my thing here and then I'm going to use this punch now this punch is out of stock right now um for a while but if you get the card kit we'll include the punch so that you can still have the pieces um so then I'm just gonna punch that so handy and there is my full watermelon but I also want to use the slices because we've got a slice with a bite out. We've got a slice and we've got like a half a slice, like a half a watermelon in the slice off of that. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to, uh, on my scraps, I'm also going to stamp a couple of the slices. So let me grab them. Um, and then I also love that they included... Uh, the little seeds as a separate stamp so you can add seeds as needed and then the the rinds are separate from the um, are separate from the watermelon too which is pretty fun okay so the next one I'm gonna do is the big wedge and so we'll take an I like to stamp the rind first but it's kind of whatever whatever you're comfortable with either either way it will work and I'm going to use sweet sorbet, of course, because that'll coordinate with my card so nice. By the way, my um, my team member, Sherry, who's just the sweetest, she made this card and shared it with me. So I um, am so excited to share it with you because I just thought it was so stinking cute. So look at the bite marks are out of this wedge. And I just love, you know, there's all this kind of texture built into the stamp so that it looks like it's been watercolored, even though you are not um, watercoloring it, which I just love that part. Okay, now I wanna add some seeds to this. Okay, so there's like uh, three little seed kind of 
three little seed cluster and then there's also individual seeds. Okay, so we've got that one. Then we're also going to do the half of a, see, here's another scrap, <laughs> the half of a um, watermelon. And I'm going to actually turn it like this because that'll make it easier to punch with my punch. Actually, it probably won't, but whatever. We'll get, we'll get there. It's all right. It's all good. All right. Then I will once again use my sweet sorbet for this. I think it's funny. I'm not actually using Melon Mambo for any of these cards, but you for sure could. Okay. So then I'm just going to kind of put my little seeds in here, kind of like that. And then, like I said, this will work with the punch. See, so, you now it's just fine. So boom. And then I'll just cut this off. So I love that the punch totally goes with this which is just handy and dandy. All right, now we've got our snips out, so let's go ahead and trim this out. So this obviously doesn't coordinate with the punch at all, but it's pretty easy to trim out. I'm gonna come back in and go in on the bite mark, the teeth, which I just think is so cute. Our old dog, um, Sophie, loved 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 watermelon oh my gosh I'll never forget the first time we gave it to her we were on our boat one day and it was super hot and um she just went nuts over it which was really fun okay so that looks good now we're also going to stamp um inside the card as well so I'll do that real quick um ba -ba -ba, where is my stamp okay so I'm just going to stamp <laughs> this cracks me up my little smiley faces gosh what does that look like <laughs> I haven't stamped any body parts in so long <gasps> like inappropriate body parts okay we're just gonna put one more on there hanging off the side oh my gosh but now that you've seen it you can't unsee it you are welcome okay so let's make these into melons. That's probably not totally helping. <laughs> I will have to show my husband this because he will think that's funny. Okay, so then I'm just going to put a few little seeds in there like that. And so that's for the inside. There you go. I can't, can you believe it's been, I mean, it's been like years since we have um, had an inappropriate card stamped. <laughs> so there it is, in case you missed it. <laughs> Look at those melons. <laughs> ah! Okay, I hope you are giggling. All right. Also, if my son was down here, I guarantee you that's what she said would have come out by now. Okay, so <laughs> we've got our pieces. <laughs> Also, uh, I am going to be showing you a stamp set that coordinates with this um, melon set with some of the sentiments, and that's the Sweetest Cherries. So I'm going to stamp sweet on the front, and then on the inside, I'm going to stamp friend. I'm like, I swear it's on here. Friend, right there. Okay, these are cherries. Gosh, isn't that something in emojis? We don't have to talk about it, but I think it is. All right, don't I sound old? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stamp in here with, where did I do with my black ink? Here it is. I put it away like I was done, but I am not. Okay, so sweet is gonna go on the outside and then friend is going to go on the inside, which is just cute. Okay, so now let's put that, put that on the inside. I guess I could have made a, another card with, uh, you know, like inappropriate cards. That is kind of one of my specialties. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we've got that on the front. Then I have this, um, piece that I die cut um, from the perennial postage dies and then we're going to stamp sweet on the front again in our memento and I this is I'm going to switch mementos because I have a 
Um, that one needs to be ranked, and I know this one is good. I just want it to be a little better inked for the cover, for the front of our card, because, you know, we're fancy like that. Okay, much better. So sweet. And then friend. Okay, so let's arrange this. Now, I want to take, there's kind of the little vines, as if you know how watermelons or melons in general grow, there's vines kind of all over the place. So let's tuck a couple of those in here. So I'm going to kind of stamp that one down and then I'm going to sort of arrange things on here just so that I know I'm placing um, my, my stamped images in places they'll be seen. So I'm going to put that one kind of up there. So then I want, um, I want a greenery right here. And then I also am going to have just kind of the other end of it and we'll have it out here. That way I know they'll all show. Okay, so these are gonna dry a little bit and we're gonna pop this up. Where is my dimensionals? I haven't even used any yet. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this up. Like I said, right about here, kind of a little bit at an angle. All right, and then I'm gonna have this one this piece sort of laying right on top. Maybe I'll take an edge piece. So I'll sort of um, I'll put this down right here. And then the top of it, I will put some seal on. Okay, so then it's going to kind of sit right there on my watermelon and then the slice is going to go underneath like that okay now this is super cute but it could be cuter okay i think this is a but wait there's more situation so i'm going to pop this up onto my card and then we're going to um, add a little pizzazz to this card I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got that on there like so. And then I'm going to take and add some happy little flowers. Not happy little trees. This is not a Bob Ross situation. Okay, from, <laughs> from my stamp set, um, ba -ba -ba, what is the name of this flower set? Oh, here we go. Nope, that's not it either. Well, you could use the flowers from the Sweet Citrus. There's little flowers in there. But um, I'm going to use... Oh, it's the set that has the punch. What is it called? It starts with a P, I think. Why can't I think of it? And, and where did my set go? Because I pulled it out to get the stamp set. Well, that's silly of me. Um, does anybody know? Petal Punch... Thank you. Pedal Park. Pedal Park. That's it, Joy. Good job. It, whoever said Pedal Punch, that's the punch. And then Pedal Park is the name of the set. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to just stamp this single little flower three times in Daffodil Delight on here. And look at how sweet that is. And then we can take the Pedal Punch. And ooh, I started to push and it moved on me. There's one. Now, if you find that your cute little scrap that you have is not big enough, there's a solution for that. Okay, take a post-it. Ooh, I think I have the last one. Take a post-it and put stick stick your cardstock on here, not your thumb, your cardstock. And that kind of is like uh actually put it over here because that'll work better. It's like a little reaching arm so that you can punch this little teeny scrap because I was like, oh I don't need much. Okay, so 
there's your three little flowers. And if you can't find them, it's probably that they're stuck on your melons, so to speak. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. I'm here all week. All right. I'm just going to foof these up because, you know, I can't help myself. And we'll tuck these in on our card. And it's going to just give us the happiest little pop of color on here. And then we're going to embellish. So doesn't this add just the best touch to this card and really make it fancy pants? It's just so dang cute. I love it. Can you tell? Okay. So we've got three of them on there. And then, of course, we got to embellish. I mean, hello. So I'm going to take my in color pearls and we're going to add some to this card and the this is the embellishment you'll get if your order is 75 dollars or more this week so that's a lovely little extra treat and i'm going to put the sweet sorbet ones in the center here so isn't that just so dang cute oh i love it now, if you wanted, you could also add a couple of extra dots to this because sometimes I like having odd numbers. So I'm just going to throw, because, I mean, we've got them. <laughs> I'm just going to throw in a few extra gems just to add a little something, something to this. So there is our card, sweet friend. Isn't that just the cutest? So thank you so much, Sherry, for this idea. I love it so, so much. Okay, so that was my first one. Um, my second card is a really fun one, too. And this is another card I actually received in a swap. And I um, just had to share. I think you guys are going to like it, too. First, I got to just tidy up a teeny little bit. Okay, so this is the chamois that comes with your glass mat studio which is so lovely okay um all right so ooh, I was trying to watch my live so I could see the comments oh no I don't want to abandon my stream I guess I can't do that all right we're still here. Yep. Okay, good. All right. So, um, let's see. The next card we're going to do is another cutie patootie. This one is, um, going to feature a papa pretty peacock, <laughs> papa pretty peacock. Um, and pretty peacock is really close to lemon lime twist. Um, it's just, I, let me, I'll show you the difference too. Lemon Lime Twist would work for this also, but so I'd say this is a little yellower color and this is a little bluer green color, if that makes sense. So this is maybe a warmer yellow, uh, yellow green and lime green, and this is a cooler lime green. So that's kind of the difference. It's not you know, not a huge difference, but man, the two of them look terrible together. <laughs> I'll tell you that. However, Gar Granny Apple Green looks pretty good with both. So that's kind of just an interesting thing. Okay. Now I've got three strips of a paper that I embossed. Each of these is one and five eighths by four inches. And I embossed them with, this is the, uh, softly sophisticated embossing folder that's part of the softly sophisticated um bundle that uh you can get in celebration of course if you get the card kit you will get um these pieces will be embossed for you because uh, we're kind of nice that way all right this next piece i did with the rainy days or i think raindrops folder I think is what it's called but I thought it looked like the seeds how cool is that kind of brilliant right and then the last this is in a little set of two die uh, two embossing folders um and I 
I can't think of the name of it. It's like splotches and stripes or something. <laughs> You're probably like, um, I don't think that's what it's called, Dina, but nice try. I don't know. But anyway, um, so I put my three strips on here. And then on a scrap, well, okay, so then I also have a piece of white because we're going to stamp on the inside of our card as well. And on my white um, piece, or scrap piece, I should say, I'm going to do a little stamping. Okay, so I've got another scrap here. I'm going to stamp my... going to stamp my full watermelon and my sliced watermelon. <laughs> okay, I did granny apple green again, or I'm sorry, garden green. And then, uh, let's see, I'm also going to do the other wedge rind in the inside of my card. Okay. And then I'm going to use, well, you know what? We can use Melon Mambo on this card because it just seems like if we're making melon cards, we should use the melon stamp pad, right? <laughs> That's how I feel. So I think we're going to go for it. And melon looks fabulous with this green too. It's a lovely contrast. So um, it's a little pinkier than the sweet sorbet. Close, but different. All right, then we'll do... The wedge piece for this one. I'm not really cleaning my stamp and I'm okay with that. Okay, there we go. So that's super cute. And then um, let's see. I've got a little piece of white cardstock because we're going to put, this is a scalloped contour die cut and then we're going to put a piece of white over the top of this. And um, this piece is two inches by three and a quarter inches, the white piece. Okay, now I saw a question in here. Wendy said, are you able to slightly adjust your camera? I can't see the top third of your mat. Well, I, so I have it at the bottom. I, um, but I don't, I'm not, this is just like the, hmm, adjust the screen. Like that? Is that better? I hope that's better. Holler. Let me know if it's better. Okay. Cheryl says yes. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's the one thing is my glass mat kind of alters my perception of what I know fits in my screen. So I apologize for that. I feel like um, sometimes I miss things. I got to like put a, like a post-it between the top and bottom okay anyway so I've got this uh, piece of white that we're going to put on here that's going to go on like that and I want to oh and I need another scrap because we're going to I think I'm going to punch one more watermelon too just for the inside because because we can you know okay so one more slice and I just love how they made this coordinate with the punch, the slice part, you know, it's just so stinking cute. All right, so we've got that. Then I'm going to stamp the little greenery here, and then we're also going to stamp it on our piece of white. So I moved this out of the way so that I wouldn't accidentally stamp on it, if you know what I mean. Okay, so there's one there, and I'm actually gonna fussy cut that out. And then the other one I'm gonna stamp right here so that it'll show up on our card. Okay, so this one I'm gonna put over there so as to not cut it out, and then these ones will punch and cut. Okay, so boom, this watermelon. This, is anybody craving watermelon, by the way? I'm totally like, I could go for a slice right about now. All right, so then here is my slice of watermelon and my other slice of watermelon. Oh, I meant to stamp the seeds. We'll, we'll get there. It doesn't really matter if you do it before or after. And then we're going to fussy cut. So um, tell me as I'm fussy cutting, is this better for the screen? I'm so sorry that it was out of the screen. If you missed anything. 
I try to keep my eye on that, but every so often I miss out. All right. Um, so, so much fun, this little set. And this little vine is just so perfect. Stampin' Up! does such a good job um, getting these little details. And this is a distinctive stamp set, which means it's got all the, all the details in these images. And so if you're trouble, if you're having trouble getting those details, there's a really good tip that I have for you, and that is to get a spoon. <laughs> so, um, um, a spoon, I, I got a little cheap set of three spoons from, I think, Target. I know Walmart has them too, but they're just, you know, cheapy spoons. I think it, three of them were like $2 or something. It was very inexpensive. And then I keep them in my craft room because I don't want my family eating off of my ink spoons. That's what I call them. <laughs> and I use the back of the spoon to rub the ink into the ink pad. So if you ever, especially if you have a brand new pad, um, the ink kind of pools at the surface, which we love for like those big solid stamps, but on a detail stamp like this, sometimes you lose the detail. So we want to see that detail that you can see right there. But if you lose it, in fact, this is even a little blotchy. Let's, we could, we could try and we could fix it. Okay. So let me demonstrate what I mean by that. So I'm going to take my spoon. This is my cheap, pretty sure I got these at Target. I think I got these when we were getting Ella stuff for her apartment. <laughs> and, um, I'm just rubbing the ink into my ink pad. Okay, so I would just run that under the faucet to clean it off or on your chamois. And then when you go to stamp it again, oh, look at that detail. Okay, so let me show you the difference. So my melon pad was a little juicier and you can see it's kind of splotchy here. It's not perfect it's not bad but it's not great but then look at the detail you can see oh it's amazing so it really does make a difference if you rub that ink in so I recommend trying that and then there's our the new rind <laughs> okay so next up I'm gonna take my Oh, where did she go? My softly sophisticated stamp set. And I'm going to do um, hello there. There's, oh, we've got hello in tons of different sets. So just choose a set that you'd like to use. And then I'm going to stamp this in some black ink. I just need a block real quick. But that's where this hello there comes from, is from my um, Softly Sophisticated stamp set. All right, so I'll stamp this in, here is my black, and I think this is the good black pad too. I gotta re-ink my other one. <laughs> oh yeah, she's good, all right. Oh, and then while we're at it, let's add some little seeds in those slices. Okay, now I'm going to fussy cut this word out too. And I can already hear some of you groaning like, really? It's not that bad. So just leave a little border. Some people really like cutting. Some people really dislike cutting. I understand this is not my favorite thing to do but gosh the look of it is just so cute and sometimes it's just nice now if you don't like to fussy cut it just trim the cardstock square around the word and I would say roughly a three-quarter inch strip will work just fine so you don't you know if you, if if cuss buddy buddy cussing <laughs> fussy cutting is not your thing um or fuddy cussing for that matter you can just stamp it on a scrap that's about three quarters of an inch and it will, the sentiment will fit on there or, or, you know, whatever the size sentiment you're using is. 
um, there we go, almost done. So it's not that bad. Notice, by the way, I'm holding my snips in one place and I'm just kind of curving around the words. So there we go. Hello there. All right, then let's snip off our slices of whatever this is, watermelon. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to add this to the inside of my card because I think it's cute. I'm going to do this one because it's not as perfect because it's the inside, who cares? <laughs> There we go. It's because it's white on white, you don't see that little extra ridge. It's just me being picky. All right, <laughs> let's take and put this together. Now we're gonna add a little ribbon to this, which is fun. And I suspect you might have this problem if you're like me. So you might have gotten the ribbon combo pack with red ribbon and you've used a lot of red ribbon. And then you have plenty of green ribbon left over and you're like, what am I going to do with the green ribbon now that Christmas is over? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this ribbon and I wonder, is this piece? No, yeah, it's just like the leftover of, of a roll. Um, you're going to take this ribbon and of course, just put it around this card, this panel right here, like so. And then I'm just going to trim these off. Ooh. You can trim yours better than mine. It's totally optional. <laughs> and I'm just going to set that down for a second because it's kind of silly to hold three things in your hand at once. Okay, now this is a fun way to add ribbon to a card that does not add as much bulk as if you tied a knot. So this is one of my, I don't want to say one of my favorite things to do, but it's just a fun, I, I like it a lot, and it's a fun way to do things. Now, I will also tell you, if you have one of these little clips, um, even a paper clip would probably work pretty well for this. I'm just going to hold this on my card, and it's going to hold my ribbon together for the next part, which is, I'm going to take um, a little of my twine here. This is um, this is from the In Color Baker's Twine Combo Pack. The lemon lime or the pretty pretty peacock. It will work with lemon lime twist. There's there's no problems there. Okay, but now it's like having an extra finger to hold this ribbon in place while I tie a little bow with the twine, which of course is much less lumpy than a bow with the ribbon. How do you like them apples? This, These are melons, though. <laughs> How do you like those melons? Oh, that's probably inappropriate. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, so isn't that fun? How that fit on there? I love that so much. Okay, now that I've tied that around, I can adhere that to my piece of die or my die cut um again this was with the scallop contour dies okay so that just fits right in there like so and then we're gonna add our pieces so I've got my big watermelon I'm gonna tuck in there my little leaf that we so uh, carefully cut out so we want that to kind of hang down so you can see all of the goodness all right, I'm gonna pop this one up over the top. Okay, so um, I, I've mentioned now two cards that I've made here with swaps. And people often ask me where I get my ideas. And one of my favorite places to get ideas is from card swaps. So I participate in quite a few of them. Um, one of my favorite things as a demonstrator is swapping, to be completely honest. It's just, it really, when I first started stamping and I did not know a thing, um, it really helped me understand how to, how to make cards better was to swap. So 
Um, I recommend it. If you're a demonstrator, uh, there's lots of card swaps out there. Of course, my team has a card swap every month. And I'm so proud of them. They do such a good job. Okay, so I'm just going to throw my little watermelon here kind of off on the side. And then that word that we just so expertly cut off or cut out, cut off, cut out, whatever. Um, I'm going to attach that on here as well with a dimensional. You don't have to put a dimensional on here, but oh my gosh, I just, I can't even help myself. <laughs> so it's good for an edge piece. So we'll tuck that in right there. And look at how cute this is. Now I took, um, this is from uh, Greta on my team. She's a really fabulous stamper. I took her idea. I altered it slightly, but I kept fairly true to her card. But isn't that so cute? All right, so we're going to throw this on the inside. And, you know, you could stamp another sentiment on here if you wanted. Um, or you could leave it just with the, the melons. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to forget that first card we made. Okay, but wait, there's more. So we'll take and embellish with some of our uh, pretty peacock. No, parakeet party. What am I saying? Pretty peacock. That is not a pretty peacock. Parakeet party. There's just so many alliterations in the Stampin' Up! world. Have you guys noticed that? So we'll just add a few gems to this. And how cute is that? I love it. So I love the different textures. I think that really is fun with this card. So, um, oh, Jill said, let me back this up. I know what swapping is, but could you please explain, are there rules? Yes. it. You know, the rules really depend on the swap that you're in. So like in my team swap, we have rules. They're, they're basically that you need to use current Stampin' Up! products. And the reason is, is because we want to use them in our business. Um, but it, it just depends on the swap that you participate in because different swaps have different rules. Some people do card fronts. Some people do car full cards. I, most people do full cards anymore. I remember when I first started stamping, we used to do trading cards, which were like half of a card front because we were so um, careful to save all our paper and be so, um, you know, economical with our paper, which kind of makes me giggle. But anyway, uh, so full cards and then... Um, so we put in our team swap, we put our cards in a clear envelope. So we sell these in the catalog. They're clear envelopes. They're the same size as a card. And you can see your card fits in here so nicely. And some people might wonder why you would put your card in the envelope. Well, when you're swapping cards or when you're sending cards, they're, they get all mixed up. And when you're pulling them out... I mean, stuff rips off really easily. So this just makes it really nice and easy so that the cards don't rip apart as you're doing this. So, yeah. Um, Joy is asking, where would somebody who wanted to stamp more find swaps to join? That's a good question. For demonstrators, there's lots of places. Um, check your team leader if they have a swap. Um, like I offer swap for my team. Uh, in our kickoff group, so if you were part of our um, kickoff, sometimes we do this with retreats too, um, but during our kickoff event, we had an optional swap. It's due this week, so I think that's a little late to get participating in that, but we do that with each new catalog, which is very fun. Um, there are also Facebook groups that offer swaps for both demonstrators and not demonstrators, so there's a lot of places um, you really... Uh, just have to take a look for them. So they're, they're really fun to do. Um, yeah. So we, you know, we, uh, and that, well, so here's, this isn't exactly a swap per se, but we're doing the card exchange, uh, on my stamping or my sending sunshine and rainbows Facebook group. So that is a good opportunity to, you're not really swapping, but there's an exchange of cards that's happening there. So you get lots of ideas. Like, you know, I showed you all those cards at the beginning of my video that came in my mailbox. So you can take those cards 
and like for instance this one who was this from Becky on my team so this is a really cute card layout right so honestly it's similar to this it's just a little different she used the same die she punched something and put it on top by the way can we just admire the little polka dot vellum um, wings she used okay sorry anyway <laughs> so um she's got a layer of designer series paper a layer of cardstock and a layer of um or her card base so you know a lovely sweet card did her stamping and added her sentiment across here I could easily take this card layout and and then change it into my own card Okay, so I, obviously that's not what happened here, but think of it in this way. So instead of the DSP and the cardstock, I did three pieces of cardstock behind. I've got my, my die cut piece, and then I did my stamping on it. Um, I just did the layer of white because my scallop is a different color. I switched the card to be horizontal instead of vertical. And then... Um, you know, added my punched pieces on top. So, you know, obviously it's similar, but not really. This wasn't the inspiration, um, but you get the idea. So it's just a really great way to to participate um, and, and practice your stamping skills and all that. Um, Jill's asking how many. It really depends on the swap. Like my team swap is 16 cards and you get 15 back. Typically the person who's hosting the swap keeps a project. Um, and that's kind of like how she gets paid for the time that it takes to um, participate. And then there's usually a fee charged for shipping because obviously it costs money to send them back. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. Um, it really just sort of depends on the swap. Like the one we do for the kickoff was 20 cards and you get 19 back. So um, a lot of cards swaps like I participate in some swaps with other demonstrators and they are. 20 plus one and then the plus one is for the hostess and then the 20 you get 20 cards back so it just it all varies so yeah so there you go there's some information about swapping okay we've got one more card and it's the best one okay so this is the one I designed um and I was like looking at my melons <laughs> and um I mentioned my household is mostly men right <laughs> so uh I am giggling but I love this card. It makes me giddy. And this is what I love about stamping is when you come up with an idea and you're just like, yes. Okay. So I was looking at my melon slices and I thought, gosh, what does that look like? It reminds me of something. What is that? And the answer, of course, is it reminds me of a slice of citrus. Now, yes, we have the sweet citrus stamp set, which we're actually going to use, but I loved the look of this, um, this half slice here as the sweet citrus. And I also love, <laughs> because this is a, a stamp that coordinates with the punch, I can punch this instead of die cut it because sometimes I get lazy. That's right, you heard me. I, if, if I can punch instead of die cut, it, it does kind of make me happy. Not, you know, like, especially if I'm doing it bulk cards and, and so much of what I do is, so much of what I do is rarely a single card, right? Like I'm always prepping cards for classes or kits or, or to make in bulk to send for a swap or whatever. Um, I send tons of cards out for my team members, for birthdays, for all kinds of things. So I rarely make just a single card. It's pretty rare. So anyway, um, I thought it would be really fun to do a citrus card. So we're going to start with a nice, happy, vibrant Tahitian Tide card. And, you know, we're using all these fun in-color things. These are the in-colors that are going to be retiring soon. So I would start planning now by purchasing cardstock and refills on these colors if you have them so that your your pads and whatnot will be, you'll be able to continue to use them. Um, so I took a four by five and a quarter inch piece and I did emboss it with that hybrid folder that coordinates with the Sweet Citrus stamp set. So I really love this set and I use it um, plenty. What I'm pulling from this is the sentiment, enjoy the sweeter things in life, which I think is just so, so, so cute. Um, 
And so I'm going to put that uh, embossing folder that coordinates with the stamp set on the front of my card. Okay, so we've got that. Like that. All right. And then um, I've got a piece of cardstock, of white cardstock, which is four and a half by three and a quarter. And I'm going to take my uh, Tahitian Tide ink pad and um, my blending brush. This happens to be a small one, but you can use either side. And I'm just going to get some ink on here and I'm going to flip this over. <laughs> Make sure it's not too dark. If you had scrap paper handy, you could do that. And I'm just going to kind of color in the background. Uh, just to add a little color to this. So I really want it mainly white, but a little bit of Tahitian Tide pulls everything together. Okay, now I'm going to attach that to a three and a half by four and three quarters inch piece of Parakeet Party. I got it right on the first time this time. Ah, what did I say earlier? Pretty peacock. Huh. What was I thinking? All right, and then that's going to go on here like that. And I just love that little citrus peeking out on the edges. I think that's super fun. Okay, so then I'm going to pull in my four by five and a quarter that's going on the inside. And we're going to do um, our stamping on some scraps and then on um, and then on the inside of our card. So what I'm going to do is take and create some slices of citrus. And, um, and then I'm going to make them into citrus wedges, which I hope you will think is brilliant. And if somebody did this before me, I was not aware of it. And so I hope this is my own original idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with, um, first of all, I'm going to find, oh, I'm going to find my stamps. They're just right here in front of me. Okay. So I'm going to start with a yellow or a lime. Seriously. Okay. So Granny Apple Green is the color of my um, peel. And then Parakeet Party is going to be the color of my wedge. Now I'm going to quick clean this because we did use it with our berry color or Melon Mambo. So I'm going to I'm going to take it to the next level and use my stamp and scrub to clean this off just to make sure whenever I um I don't know if you've ever noticed this probably our reds and pinks they really tend to stain colors and so I like to sometimes double check that we've got all the ink off so it doesn't translate onto the stamp. Okay, now are you ready for here's where the magic happens. I'm going to take my stamp and blends marker. Um, for Parakeet, I chose the light one, but for the other colors, I chose the dark of the combo pack. And I'm just going to draw in little lines. So I'm finding basically the center point and then drawing out my wedge lines, just like that. Oh, isn't that adorable? Okay. Now I'm going to repeat that with my other slices. So let's see, this is where we need yellow. All right, so I'm going to take and do Flirty Flamingo with my daffodil as the rind. Oh, actually, let's, sorry, I'm going to do, oh yeah, daffodil. Sorry, we just have to clean this. So you can, your chamois will be fine for this too if you need to. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this around and do the other end. Okay, so that's the daffodil rind. And then I want a lighter yellow for the, for the inside. And so, did we clean this yet? No. Okay, so this is going to be a lemon lale. All right, for the inside. And then I'm going to take my lemon lale dark marker and make my wedges. And so I love this because it's kind of tone on tone. They're not real dark, but they're still, it still makes them super obvious that they're wedges, right? 
Okay. And then I'm going to do my final one is going to be another Daffodil Delight and Flirty Flamingo, which is where I think I was going with this originally, but somehow got sidetracked. <laughs> okay, so then we'll do Flir Flirty Flamingo. And for this one, I felt like the, um, the blend was, the light blend was way too light. So we wanted to use the dark blend. Now let me get rid of all these ink pads because I know somebody out there is like, oh my gosh, Dina, there's too many open. You're right, there are. Okay. Um, oh, and then I got to, speaking of, let's actually put those flirty flamingo lines in. So again, find the center point and make uh, lines and then one more line on either side. And there you have all of your slices. Okay. So I, let's be honest, I was making good use of my paper, but not super good use of the punching I needed to do. <laughs> okay, so there's one. And two. And where did my post-it go? My handlebar post-it. <laughs> which will allow me to punch number three. All right, now we're gonna stack each of these up on our card. Oh shoot, I was supposed to stamp them on the inside of my card too at the same time so I didn't have to clean in between and oh my gosh, figures, that's all right. We can fix this. All right, we'll get there. Okay, so these are going to go on the inside of my card, or the outside of my card, sorry. Then let's quick do the inside ones. Okay, so I'm gonna oh, and I put all the ink pads away and everything, you guys. See, this is why I leave them out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do one, um, and then I'm actually gonna switch mix it up. I go in the apple and I'll do two. Okay. These are like mammogram boobies. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Aren't you glad you have me? <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to keep it light, right? Okay, so then I need um, I need a parakeet party for that one. And then I need a flirty flamingo. I'll put that one on the bottom. Like that. And then, what was the other one? Lemon lolly. Of course, we had to have a lemon made of lemon lolly, right? It's in the name. It's only natural. So that is going to go on the inside. Now we've got all the ink pads closed again. It's all good. And our markers are still here. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. So cute. Boom, boom, boom. And they don't have to be perfect because in a lemon wedge, they're not, you know, or a citrus wedge of any kind. They're not perfect, so who cares? But, oh, so stinking cute. Okay, now let's put our card together. Um, now, those of you who know me, what is one of my favorite color combinations that I love to do? It gets me all excited. Anybody know? Can you, can you tell me? And the answer is not actually Coastal Cabana this time, but Coastal Cabana always looks really good with this idea. <laughs> Nobody knows. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, so I adhered that to my card. And then we're going to pop these up onto the front. Of course, I mean, like we weren't going to pop them up. <laughs> I know y'all knew that was coming, but who, do you guys know what my favorite color combi combination is? I can't believe you guys haven't come up with it. It so works with this too. Spritz? Well, you know, I do love a good spritz, that's for sure. But actually, no. Although we could spritz this. With the color, that is part of my favorite color combo. Not rainbow. I do love a good rainbow, but that's not actually my very favorite. <gasps> Sue is almost there. It is... Black and white with a pop of color. That is my all-time favorite color combination. And see what I did there? Because you can do, you know, a lot of different colors. So we're going to take a little strip of black cardstock. So this is a three-quarter inch strip by, I think, four inches. And, and I'm not, I don't think I know, four inches. And we're going to stamp that inverse mark and heat emboss it with white powder because I mean what else would you do so we've got these nice bright vibrant colors and then we're going to stamp the sentiment on a black strip with Versamark and pop it up on the front because oh my gosh it's just going to be so stinking cute now I'm going to stamp this off to the left side of my strip because that will allow me to use um, a little a little something something on the front. You'll see. Okay. Because my embellishments on this are just too flippin' cute. Okay, so I got my powder on. Do you think Carl is upstairs wasting away dying? because he's not been fed dinner yet because we're running long. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is. Poor kid. One of our favorite lines. This is from a show. I can't think of what it is. Oh, it's from Harry Potter. It's the line, Do you ever stop eating? <laughs> We say that to him all the time. Okay, so there we go. So cute. And then I'm going to put this at the bottom of my card and we'll pop that up too. Now somebody said spritzing. And, um, you know, I love the idea of spritzing this. So I think we for sure could. I just don't want to actually spritz on my um, on my melons. <laughs> so I can kind of cover them. Oh, look, that's kind of perfect. Oh, maybe they're making dinner. I was thinking we'd go out because we kind of usually pick up dinner on Mondays. Okay, there, that covers my things. And then <laughs> we don't want black flecks in our melons because it's like, okay, is something growing on them? You know, mm, don't want that. All right. Now to finish this off, I'm going to take a little of my black and white gingham ribbon. And remember when you get the card kit, it comes with all the things. So you've got, you'll get your ribbon pieces, your, your um, embossed pieces, all the things will be there for you. So you just add the stamps and um, and the ink. So it's it's like the easy button just for you. So don't forget, you have until the 18th to order. Okay, so stinking cute. And then I'm going to take my little dots here 
and da, 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 where is my take your pick tool in all of this chaos <laughs> okay so I'm gonna take and put oopsies a little green one over here a little one of these ones are probably technically um what do you call that orchid oasis um and then I'm gonna take a another green one over here and then I'm going to put a couple of, actually, I don't like those. Kidding. I'm taking them back. You can do that. It's my card. Too much. Don't need them. But look at that. So cute. And then we'll add our little inside. And then um, I think... I'm also going to add to this another sentiment from our Sweet Citrus stamp set. Because it just works. Okay, so I can do sending you a big squeeze, thanks a bunch, or have a zesty birthday. So I think I'm going to do sending you a big squeeze because that's kind of fun. And we'll stamp that in black, of course. And somewhere on this desk is my black ink pad. Oh, but it's a secret. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. So fun. Oh my gosh. Isn't that just the cutest? So I hope you loved these cards. So don't forget, if you would like to get registered for a free card kit, all you got to do is place an order in my online store between now and Sunday for um, a free card kit. $35 gets you the paper, $75 gets you the embellishment to go with it, and um, and if you're at $50, you also get the lavender uh, Perennial Lavender All-Star Video Class Bundle PDF for free, which is a $15 value, or you can purchase it. The link to do that is in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had the best time and um, enjoyed our cards and the girls. <laughs> So thanks again for being here with me today. I will be back later this week with actually another watermelon card. Um, I can't remember what day I have that going live. Probably Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and then I also, uh, just a one final reminder to get registered for the Perennial Lavender um, Retreat Weekend. It's the Lavender, or wait, Lavender Dream Stamping Escape. I named it, but yet I can never seem to say, say it. <laughs> uh, we have so much fun stuff planned for you and hope that you can enjoy it. So we will see you all soon. Have a good evening and bye.